Tongue Terror. Primarily used during the days of the Roman Empire, the Tongue Terror was unlike most torture methods. Instead of forcing victims to admit their crimes, this method was meant to silence people with opinions different from what was normal at the time. The world is actually a globe and not flat? That's a tongue tearing. We don't have to send thousands of men to their deaths in war? That is especially a tongue tearing. It was a twisted way to control the masses, silencing them through fear or using the literal method. The tongue terror was a pair of pliers with jagged edges. It didn't look too dangerous, but how it was used made people fear it. Authorities had to tie down their victims and force their mouths open to use the tongue terror. From there, they used this device to clamp it down on the victim's tongue, twisting and pulling it out of the victim's mouth. It wasn't only about dishing out immense pain and suffering and keeping people silent, especially when there were many opinions about an unpopular leader. While the Romans mostly used it, it became one of the most common torture methods used by different cultures throughout history, due to how simple yet effective it was. Judas Cradle The Spanish Inquisition, a group meant to combat heresy in Spain, was creative enough in its methods to sort out people with different religious beliefs, but the Inquisitors were more creative at torturing heretics, using the Judas Cradle to extract confessions and information from prisoners. The Judas Cradle was too simple for anyone to think of, but creative enough in its application. It was a pointed seat, shaped like a pyramid. Victims were hoisted and lowered as the pyramid's tip aimed to enter the bottom hole. It was a slow torture that allowed the Judas Cradle's tip to stretch everything out as the rest of the pyramid gradually entered the anus, causing the worst kind of pain imaginable. Torturers would even try to speed the process by adding weights to the victim. Adding insult to injury, the Judas Cradle could cause infections because it was left uncleaned every time it was used. And even if the victim makes it out alive after a confession, uh, let's just say that things down there would never be the same again. The Rack The Rack is a medieval torture method disguised as a visit to your physical therapist. This device was a wooden frame with rollers at each end. The victim's ankles and wrists are tied to these rollers as the torturers start turning the crank to allow the rollers to pull the victim in opposite directions. It may initially provide relief by cracking those aching joints, but the Rack eventually pulls your body beyond its normal limits. The rack stretches the victim like a chef stretches pizza dough, pulling those bones out of place slowly yet steadily. Victims often confess to pretty much anything, regardless of whether or not they're guilty, to make the agony stop. But even if the victim does survive the rack, it leaves them disfigured and with broken bodies and spirits. Let's just say a trip to the rack isn't the best way to stretch those stiff muscles and joints out. Garot As one of the most efficient torture devices in humanity's dark past, the garrot is a contraption designed for strangulation instead of creating a bloody mess that torturers need to clean up after. The garrot is a chair-like machine that consists of a metal collar with a screw mechanism. It works by forcing the victim to sit on the chair as the metal collar is wrapped around their neck. As the screw tightens, the collar applies pressure to the neck, blocking veins and arteries in the neck and causing strangulation. Its purpose was straightforward, in the sense that it worked by squeezing the life out of its victim in a slow but painful manner. Manner. Victims would have to bear the pain of their airways getting crushed. In the worst case scenario, the pressure from the collar would be enough to snap the spine. The terrifying part about the garrot was its comparatively compact form and relatively cleaner method of torturing and killing. Torturers didn't have to bring large machines that may have been effective but were heavier and bloodier to use. On the other hand, the garrot got the job done efficiently, making it the preferred torture and execution method by many European nations, including Spain, which continued to use the garrot until 1959. Saw Torture Saw torture is the perfect blend of psychological and physical torture. It starts with a person tied down to a table or a platform. Meanwhile, a massive saw blade hangs above the victim. The saw slowly lowers down toward the person, inch by inch, causing psychological pain to the victim, anticipating the pain that they're about to feel. The feeling of seeing a giant blade steadily making its way down is psychological torture at its finest. Every second feels like an eternity for the victim who knows that the saw is going to mess them up badly once it reaches them. And as you can expect, the idea of an impending painful death is usually enough to get a confession out of anyone. There are times, however, when the saw torture was only meant to be psychological, because the saw blade stopped just short of cutting the victim, especially if the person had already confessed to their crimes. But if the blade does indeed make its way down to the person, it doesn't take much to inflict maximum physical damage or even instant death 
as the saw cuts through skin, flesh, and organs. Scaphism. Allegedly used in ancient Persia, scaphism starts with the victim getting force-fed milk and honey. But it's not just a few cups of this sweet stuff. Instead, the torturers keep on shoving milk and honey down the person's throat until they're about to burst. It doesn't get any better, because the victim is tied to two boats and is bathed in more milk and honey. From there, the boat is sent to a swamp, where the victim is left out in the hot sun while bugs and other creepy crawlies make their way to the sweet scent of sugar. They start munching on the victim's skin and flesh, but they're not there to get a quick bite. Instead, they stay as long as possible, feasting on the person who feels every agonizing bite from hundreds or thousands of bugs. It can get worse when nature calls and the victim is forced to pee and defecate on the spot, causing more insects and other critters to make their way to the buffet table. It's a nightmarish scene that's meant to drag on for as long as possible, until the torturers get what they want or the person dies. Necklacing. Rumored to have been used during the apartheid era of South Africa, necklacing was a form of torture that was meant to intimidate individuals or exert power over other people by instilling fear into a community. Necklacing works by wrapping a rubber tire soaked in gasoline around a person's neck and arms. The tire is set on fire, burning the person wearing this twisted necklace as it melts the victim's flesh while suffocating them. This method of torture made sure to maximize the victim's pain, as they can't do anything while the heat from the tire burns through their flesh, all while they can't scream in pain because they struggle to breathe while trapped in the flames. Necklacing, however, was also a form of public execution. It was meant to torture its victims to death while also torturing the public, dealing psychological scars to different communities to make them fall in line and obey oppressive authority figures. Bamboo Torture Although there are no concrete accounts that it was ever used, bamboo torture is the perfect example of torturers being some of the most resourceful people around because it involves involves nothing but the brutality of nature. In bamboo torture, the victim is tied up over a patch of bamboo shoots. It seems harmless initially, but bamboo shoots are sharp and can grow faster than most plants. Bamboo is as tough as nails and can pierce through skin and flesh. So as time passes by, the bamboo shoots grow and pierce through the victim's skin. But the impalement isn't quick. Bamboo may grow fast, but it doesn't grow in an instant. The victim could suffer for hours or even days as bamboo slowly grows and penetrates deeper into their flesh, causing severe pain. The torture was meant to be slow and agonizing. Its victims could die from shock or by bleeding out. Those are the lucky ones, because some may have survived long enough for the bamboo to make its way through the victim's body. Waterboarding. When the CIA isn't overthrowing suspected communist governments, then it's probably spending its time at black sites like Guantanamo Bay waterboarding prisoners. It may sound like a trip to the beach, but trust us when we say that waterboarding is nothing but a twisted way of teaching you how to hold your breath underwater. Waterboarding involves torturers strapping you down on your back while covering your face with a cloth. From there, water is poured over the cloth, making you feel like you're drowning. It's a cruel way of making your brain think that you're underwater, even though you're not. The sensation puts your body in a fight or flight situation, like drowning underwater. Every part of your body is telling you that you have to swim to safety or do anything to save your life. But the worst part is that you can't do anything because you're tied down on a table. You can't even swim to safety because you're not even in the water. This torture takes a toll on your body, but it's more of a psychological horror experience that messes with your brain and makes you feel powerless while your mind thinks that you're drowning. It's not even meant to kill, but to force a confession out of the victim, simply. Pair of Anguish The Pair of Anguish is aptly named because it's a pear-shaped device with a literal twist that can cause extreme agony. This metal pair is shoved in one of your openings. In most cases, it's the mouth. However, it could be worse when the torturers decide to take it to the next level by shoving it into your anus. If that sensation isn't bad enough, they twist the pear, causing it to expand. As the metal pear-shaped object opens, it stretches whatever opening it was jammed into. It gets bigger and bigger inside you, causing immense pain, especially if it gets shoved in your behind. But the device wasn't just about inflicting physical pain. Instead, it was meant to humiliate the victim, setting an example to other people who don't want a metal contraption getting stuffed in the worst possible hole imaginable. Spanish Donkey The Spanish Donkey is not a 
fun ride at all, but is a cruel torture device designed by the Spanish Inquisition in their efforts to weed out the heretics from the public. This device is a wooden prism that's meant for the victims to sit on. However, the victim is placed in such a way that the point of the prism is in direct contact with the crotch, or genitals, causing pain and discomfort. It doesn't stop there because, as the torture progresses, weights are placed on the victim's legs to increase the Spanish donkey's pressure on the sensitive parts. The point of the torture was to inflict as much pain as possible. Look back to the times when you accidentally got your crotch hit, but magnify the pain times 10 and prolong it to minutes or even hours. That's what the Spanish donkey feels like. Of course, the point of the Spanish donkey was not to kill, but to force information out of people suspected of heresy by the Spanish Inquisition. Brazen Bowl The Brazen Bowl was an ancient Greek device that a mad ruler ordered to be crafted to torture and even execute criminals. This device was specifically made to look like a bronze bowl, but it held a dark secret. The Brazen Bowl had an opening used to stuff people inside the metal contraption. After that, a fire would be lit under the bowl to roast whoever was inside. But instead of roast beef, you get a man roasted alive as the victim screams in pain and agony. But the worst part of it all is that the Brazen Bowl was designed in such a way that it had a system of tubes that caused the victim's screams to sound like the bellowing of a bowl. So as the Brazen Bowl cooks the screaming victim inside, it creates a horrific sound that's music to the ears of a twisted man. It's torture to the public as well, especially when they know that the bull's bellowing is the screaming of a man who can't do anything while he's getting cooked alive. Breaking Wheel The Breaking Wheel is a torture device that was the medieval version of whack-a-mole on the part of the torturer. It involved tying the victim onto a spinning wheel. That's when the sinister fun starts for a man wielding the hammer. As the victim is spinning on the device, the torturer starts smashing their limbs with a hammer, cracking every bone in the person's body until they're nothing but dust. But that's just the first phase of the breaking wheel. The second phase may involve lighting a fire under the wheel, doubling the pain. So as the victim is spinning and getting their arms and legs smashed, they're getting roasted alive. Let's not even forget about the touch of dizziness and disorientation that makes everything worse. If that wasn't brutal enough, the torturer may leave the victim on the wheel for the crows and animals to feast on. But if the victim manages to survive a day out in the open, that's when the torturer turns into the executioner by breaking their neck or crushing their chest with the hammer, ending the person's suffering once and for all.